Come on, you could do with that all day. Yes, sir. I mean, why? They want you to get rid of them. So what have you been up to today then? Just got in actually, just a couple hours ago, documenting everything that's happening here. Nothing much is happening here, but what's usual, unusual that usually doesn't happen is that they don't lock the hotel down until the day of the conference. Now they do it the day before. Yeah. That's why I was. That's why I really wanted to get here from Barcelona the day before to actually get in there yeah. and come at everything. And as we tried to get in there, we actually got kind of pushed and uh, shoved away by all these security guards. And then just for documenting them, later they all came out with a whole bunch of police officers and demanded passports from me and my friend Matt. And then they and they, kept, they kept your passport. For a yeah, while. they kept my passport for about 30 minutes and mm. they put it. And yet another database, probably not the only one. Well, and, probably uh, in all of them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, they, they were nice. They weren't that bad, but it's still crazy how here they could take your ID. You even doing anything wrong? Yeah, I think that's for foreigners. If you're Swiss citizen, they can't do that. But if you're an immigrant or a tourist, I think yeah. they can. I think I gave it up when I kind of ran up to them, asking if they speak English or not. <laughs> Asking if I could go inside. I think I kind of gave up that fact to them a little bit early. But, you know, it's raining out here, but there's a lot of people, and uh, there's going to be a lot more people tomorrow, and it's going to be interesting. So, so uh, have you seen many members arrive? Because we no. heard that a few already arrived. We haven't seen nobody or anything. Me personally, I don't know if you guys seen anything. You guys seen anybody arrive here? There's, you know, there's a lot of photographers here with photo lenses on that major hill. Yeah. That pretty much documents the main entrance into the hotel, which is very close, uh, just like in Chantilly, Virginia, where you can actually see the hotel and the compound and everything that's going on. They're actually setting up some weird tripod, camera, motion sensor systems right now as we're speaking, uh, right over right over there on the main roof. If you walk past and you go to that white tent, you yeah. see them setting up different... Anybody in there? No, it's empty, I think. Tin. And I nobody is inside. Six, 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 six. Fucking bitch. Yeah. Uh, 
use them because then you can really make new products together. What's your favorite? Yeah. Not that far, it's only a 200. No. I have a really good talk about the balls. Alright. It's more important than really good talks about all of them. Uh, <clears throat> there's about 20, Sorry. 25 people. Did you have to go to the market? No. Aaron's doing that right now. Aaron's doing it as we speak. Okay folks, so I was going through some news headlines today wondering perhaps maybe if any of the mainstream news outlets will be covering this year's Bilderberg meeting you know that, that annual meeting of 130 of the world's most powerful people in, in business, politics and, and banking and some royalty as well quite an important day you'd think we're coming off a recession lots of war going on all around the world it might be of interest to the public to hear these people talk on such matters so I went to the BBC the impartial beacon of news to see if there was any news on this Bilderberg meeting this year and uh, this is the headline that came up Bilderberg mystery why do people believe in cabals? Are you fucking kidding me? It's 2011. Grow the fuck up. There's a Wikipedia page. There's an official website. There are videos of politicians talking about attending the Bilderberg meeting. Some mainstream news, like Russia Today, do cover the Bilderberg meeting. And still, all we get from the BBC is an attack on conspiracy theorists. Who are the mentally ill people here? Citizens who would like to know some of the discussion topics of the world's elite? Or the BBC who don't even think it's worth covering? What news editor sits there and goes, Oh, uh, 130 of the world's most powerful people, you say? Nah, it's not worth it. Nobody will read a story about that. Pointless. What? It's 130 of the world's most powerful people. If you can't get a story out of that, then you shouldn't be a fucking news editor. If 130 football players met in secret each year, I'm pretty sure we'd see some major headlines on it. And then of course they pull the old Oh, if you believe in Bilderberg, you must be mentally ill. Check this audio out that was on the page for this article on the BBC. Completely ridiculous. I would say only a small minority had mental health difficulties. Maybe one or two percent. Most of them, it was a political and social phenomenon. It was toxic distrust of public institutions and they had been radicalized over the internet or through political propaganda, but they did not, for the most part, have clinical mental health issues. Oh, okay. So only a few of us are actually mentally ill. Most of us were just brainwashed by people on the internet. We didn't look at the facts and come to a, a reasonable conclusion based on lots of different sources. We're either mentally ill or brainwashed. Glad we got that clear. Let, let's carry on. You focus a lot of the book on the truthers, the ones who believe that 9-11 didn't happen in the ways commonly described, but it was some conspiracy, don't you? Yes. In fact, originally my book was just going to be about 9-11 truth activists. These are the folks who, as you say, believed 9-11 was an inside job uh, by the Bush government. But what I found was that when I interviewed these people, they embraced a whole bunch of other conspiracy theories. 
And it became clear to me that conspiracism had become a sort of creed for these people. And it wasn't just about 9-11. It was about all of society. Well, give us the psychology of this. What is it in the head that drives otherwise sane people to believe weird and wacky things? Uh, perhaps it's a brain that works and can think for itself. Well, as I say, the universal aspect is distrust. Distrust of government, distrust of media, distrust of organized religion in many cases, distrust of all public institutions and society. Wait, did you just say distrust of media? Maybe that's because instead of covering a meeting of 130 of the world's most powerful people, the BBC decides to get you on to label people that do want to look into this as mentally ill. Perhaps that's why there's distrust of the media, because they're not doing their job.